Hello. Hi. How is that? That's so. I don't know how that fix. I don't know why that fixes it, but it does. It's yeah, just a headphone headset. That's all it, that I needed. Headset. We're good. So bizarre, huh? Oh. <laughs> Finally, it's like almost twelve o'clock. Uh, yeah, it's uh, two forty-two here in Florida. Are you tired? No. <laughs> no, not after sleeping 13 hours and getting two naps after that. <laughs> wow, that's awesome. Yeah, you know, and I just had a Facebook Live uh, talking about that. What's going on? Um, a lot of people are um, going through these bouts of extreme tiredness right now. and these energy shifts that we're going through. Uh, and it's reflecting a lot of, through a lot of people through vertigo when we go through these timeline shifts every time a timeline shifts and merges people are experiencing these vertigo symptoms so it's it's very um i put it out there and so many other people were just saying oh yeah me too me too me too um it's more than just a coincidence when this happens to so many people tasha i know i know it's Growing pains. Mm hmm okay. Ascension symptoms. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I noticed that either people, either someone's really feeling it, and it, mm -hmm. it seems to be people that are more awakened, I think. Yes. You know, as opposed to people that are not. Yeah, tuned in. Yeah. Uh-huh. And, and I think that a lot, a big part of it um, is... I know for me, when I, you know, learned the truth of our existence and I had that a session with my client and I was shown, you know, I had that love infiltrate my whole body and everything. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's, it can be an isolating road, you know what I mean? Um, because you're experiencing things that most people don't experience and it's very beautiful and you wouldn't take it back for nothing. But at the same time, it's, you know, it's isolating in a sense, you know, because people don't understand the truth so it can be it can get pretty um it can be isolating you know not only sure. that but it's so hard to put into words something that you're experiencing that other people haven't experienced especially when it comes from a higher dimensional level yeah something that we're taught is not possible mm -hmm. so here we are experiencing things that are not supposedly possible that happen and they're mm -hmm. happening to us so it's it, words just don't come close to describing even what what the experiences are like you know the exactly best, and i've heard a lot of people say you know similar things like oh i felt this love beyond like a love beyond this beyond this world you know um i felt this inside of me so it it's it's you know it's being awakened it's being activated i think in everybody you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i was fortunate enough to have seen what people are calling the event yeah. and it's I'll, I'll explain it to your viewers if you don't mind me no. doing so okay so i got this vision I, I get visions i hear things and see things that haven't happened yet and i get them i've been getting them for quite a while yeah. but one of the things that i saw and experienced was i saw myself standing in front of myself look, kind of looking at myself from behind and all of a sudden, this white light just floods the planet. And when that happens, the only thing that you feel is this unconditional love more than you can imagine. Now, I've, I've tried to explain this to people because just like what you were saying, if you're experiencing something that real. you really can't even put, put into words, exactly, that's coming from a higher dimensional aspect. This is the only way I can explain it. Imagine the one thing that you love the most more than anything in the world. For myself, it's my daughter, Brittany. She's, she's my everything. If it wasn't for Brittany, in 5D wouldn't exist. Yeah. As much as I love her, this love that you experience, I, I'm trying to put a number on it, and I'm under mess, underestimating it, but the love that you experience when this white light floods the earth is at least a million times stronger than the one thing or the things that you love the most on this planet. Uh, times 20 doesn't even come close. Oh, exactly. And, and there's no more, uh, you're not worried about 
you know, uh, money, politics, religion, you know, your boss is an asshole, you hate your job, none of that stuff matters anymore. You, you couldn't, when you're engulfed in that kind of love, that yeah. unconditional love from, from pure source energy, you can't even think about, well, you know, this guy was an asshole, fuck him. You know, that's not even part of your voc vocabulary anymore. You're just feeling and bathing in that unconditional love that you've never experienced in your life. Now, it's not just me that has experienced this. I had an N5D beach meetup, which I have every month here on Siesta Key. And uh, this one woman had a near-death experience and in her near-death ex experience, when she crossed over to the other side, she experienced the same exact thing. And she was saying that it's indescribable. You cannot put into words the amount of love that you're going to feel when this event happens. So it's really exciting to see how everything's unfolding, how these timelines are converging right now to humanity's greatest and highest good. I just wish that, that the, the masses were awakened and, and knew the truth of this event happening or coming mm -hmm. or it is happening you know it's been happening you know since 2012 right I mean, yeah yeah the shift has been happening and just hopefully more and more people that's my whole point of being on this site mm -hmm. is to share my experiences you know with people and it's like people are like well that's your beliefs no it's not my beliefs it's physical experiences I've had it's more real than this reality hi dinner bell it's more real than this reality mm -hmm. you know? and once mm -hmm. you have those experiences this reality no longer is a big deal yes you know it's kind of, <laughs> I'm sure a lot of your listeners are familiar with Dolores Cannon and if not I highly recommend that you check her out on YouTube I actually, before she passed on, I think it was in 2013, maybe, I interviewed her on N5D Radio. Uh -huh. I, I'm so blessed to do that. But according to Dolores Cannon, you only need to be 51% positive. That's it to make the shift. Right. And I think that is part of the reason why the shift didn't happen in 2012, because we're waiting for the, to get as many people aboard, to boost that critical mass, to I bring as many people aboard with us. Yeah. I think that there's so many people in the world that are so upset about what's going on, you know, with mm -hmm. all the, you know, their last try at, you know, continuously keeping people in the fear, right? Mm -hmm. Because that's how they have been. Yes. Us, is keeping us in a lower vibrational frequency, which is fear of, un, you know, things that are not really there that they've created, like terrorists and, you know, um, false fire. flags. Yeah. And so mm -hmm. people, if they're not aware of the fact that they're feeding their energy to that, because how are they going to know unless someone shows them that, right? Um, they're feeding into the to the energy that they don't want to happen, you know? Mm -hmm. That's why mm -hmm. I think it's so vitally important that we all share this information with people because how else are they going to find out? There's no other way to find out. And so much of it is hidden in plain sight right in front of us. For example, last weekend, Dallas in American football, the Dallas Cowboys played the Kansas City Chiefs. Mm -hmm. All sports, you know, guys, you got to get this. All sports are divide and conquer. And that's the premier example of the Cowboys playing the Chiefs, Cowboys and Indians, divide and conquer, my tribe against your tri your tribe. Right. Everything that you see on TV is scripted to, to the divide and conquer premise. So basically mm -hmm. shut your TV off or... Once you understand, at least, you can watch a football game knowing that, okay, I'm not going to buy into this. I can enjoy it from a, you know, just a, you know, the guy kind of thing level. But, you know, to understand that it is divide and conquer. The good thing about sports, though, is it shows us all how to work together as a team. And when we move on to higher dimensional um, aspects of ourselves, we won't need the violent part of being a team player. Yeah. They do teach that from the very, I mean, have you seen that documentary called I Am? It's with Tom Shadiak. No, I haven't. He was a director of like all the movies that Jim Carrey did, like all the funny mm -hmm. movies that Jim Carrey yeah. did. Yeah. Oh, cool. I love Jim Carrey. He was on top of the world, you know, mm -hmm. and he thought he was doing the right thing by, you know, um, you know, getting people to laugh, make, helping people laugh. Mm -hmm. And he had a serious bicycle accident and he um, had this concussion that um, football players get where it's mm -hmm. like, so bad that you get they get super depressed and then they like a lot of them commit suicide because it's that bad. Mm -hmm. So he experienced that for months and um, 
slowly he, you know, got pulled himself out of that. But um, he wanted to see what was going on with the world, you know, because he just had a shift in consciousness of his reality and what was he really trying to give to the world. Mm -hmm. So he goes around the world and um, it's a great documentary. It's a really send me the link. I'd like to check it out. I will definitely. Yeah. Um, I think YouTube. You know, YouTube charges to watch documentaries like that, but I actually have the file. If there's a way that I can send it to you, I'll send it to you. So you can okay, cool. It. Yeah. For so, sure. <clears throat> so yeah, yeah, there's. With you now, it's not like, um, I mean, it, you know, it's a good thing that I put metaphysics. Mm-hmm. Normally, I go into girls, you know, just to get more views, but uh, mm-hmm. I'm realizing more and more that I'm better off spending my time making a YouTube video, you know, um, and then uploading it so it can get as many views as whatever it wants. Mm -hmm. I end up, I end up coming on here and I end up spending hours, you know, and I've had some really good conversations with some people, but, um, there's a lot of time. There's a lot of space, uh, in between those conversations that I'm just sitting here not doing anything. Oh, I hear you. I hear you. You know, and I find, I know we tried earlier, um, with the Facebook live, but you know, I, I tonight I did a Facebook Live called "Big Timeline Shifts," and already it's got sixty three hundred views I in know. a matter of like I, saw I don't that. know, like an hour or so or yeah. something like that. I saw that on but YouTube. yeah, exactly. And I posted it on YouTube, and you know, by tomorrow I'll be lucky if I get a thousand views. So you're going to reach a lot more people on Facebook, yeah. and uh, you can always, uh, if you're interested, I'll show you the trick on how to convert. It's the the uh, Facebook video to a YouTube video. Yeah. There's a little trick to it, but um, I th- you can reach a lot of people on both um, social networking I arenas. Think, I think that this platform is good for, um, like, like if I have somebody that wants to guest on with me and we can actually have a conversation and not mm-hmm. really care too much about, you know, how, because the thing on here is that you get a lot of trolls too, or people are pretty childish and they just come <laughs> in. You know, one person's like, you're ugly. And I'm like, oh, uh, yeah, oh, whatever. Or you're, fat, or you're fat. And I'm like, okay, is there anything intellectual that you want to say? <laughs> you know, I was a child and family therapist before and during when I first started M5D. And I can tell you for a fact that when somebody ridicules someone else, it's usually that which they fear within themselves. You're ugly, you're fat, you're stupid. Well, that's what they're fearing within themselves. And they're projecting their own insecurities on you. So don't take it personally. Oh, I, I, I don't. In fact, I, I was like, would you like to guest in and, and tell me more? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Hell yeah. It's a, it's, a, it's a reverse psychology, you know. Yeah. It's pretty obvious when someone's trying to troll somebody. Um, come on, you know, like mm-hmm. raise your vibrational frequency, raise your intellectual mind and yes. consciousness and, you know, don't be a follower, <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, as I'm drinking water here, you know, this is one, this is uh, called Alkalife. It's a uh, 10 pH. It's, mm-hmm. There it is. Mm-hmm. Best tasting water ever. I kind of, kind of made it into commercial on my Facebook live. I, I swear to God, I'm not sponsoring them. I'm not getting paid. This right. is the best water you can ever have. Uh, if you ever have the opportunity. I've seen that before. They don't even sell oh, that here. It's delicious. Um, you can actually order it on Walmart and they'll deliver it for free to your house. Oh, really? On their site, you think? Uh Uh-huh. Uh-huh. But this is one of the ascension symptoms that's going on. Um, A lot of people are really, really thirsty. We're getting like a dryness in the back of our throat, kind of like at the bottom of the nasal cavity. Uh, A lot of people are experiencing that. The vertigo, as I mentioned, Mm -hmm. you know, as we're shifting timelines and timelines are merging, it's physiologically creating this sense of vertigo in a lot of people. And extreme tiredness. And, and, you know, I was mentioning that earlier about how, gosh, I I slept for like 13 hours. I've had that water. I've slept for like 13 hours last night. 11-11 was amazing, you know, for the beach meetup that I had. and um, Absolutely fantastic. But that night I took a nap around 8.30, didn't wake up until 4, and then went to bed immediately about half an hour later and slept another five hours and then took two naps on top of it. And as you know, when we're sleeping, we're working in the astral realms. We're doing so many things multidimensionally. And most of our, I took a class in psychology called the psychology of sleep and dreams. And all of our dreams are usually hidden within metaphor. A great example of that would be, I had this dream where 
I was standing in the foundation of a concrete home being built. Actually, I was standing on the top of two ladders, straddling a third ladder. Now, in this, the psychology of sleep and dreams, if you dream about a car or a house, the car or the house is you. For example, if you're, most of us have had this dream where we're driving the car and we're hitting the brakes and we're not stopping. Well, that car is you and there's something in your life that's out of control. And that's what that dream is trying to tell you. Now, in this dream where the house is being built and I'm in the foundation, the foundation is me and the ladders in typical dream analysis, ladders represent, you know, promotion, you're, uh, you know, ascending to, uh, you know, higher places in, in work or something like that. But if you look at a ladder, you know, a ladder is, I'll, I'll draw it out, you know, let's see, you know, kind of, kind of looks, there we go, uh -huh. like this. But what is that? That's actually DNA. Yeah. That those are DNA strands. Yeah. And what's ha we're getting a DNA upgrade right now. And this this is my interpretation of this dream. It wasn't just for me, it was for humanity. This is a global okay. dream that I had for everyone. Mm -hmm. That I know that we're getting more than three strands of DNA for our upgrade, but I couldn't imagine myself straddling 12 ladders. So I was shown that, yeah, exactly. So I was shown that I was straddling three ladders and the house that was being bo uh, built was the new earth. So it's, it's a very um, exciting and promising uh, nice dream to have. Yeah, exactly. And that's what it's all about. Metaphor. Yeah. <laughs> Pay attention to your dreams. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I, I, I see a beautiful future, you know, and that's what I see. And um, it's just what I see. Unfortunately, it's sad that, you know, I wish more people were seeing it that way. You mm -hmm. know, and when they do open up to who they truly are and they do learn the truth of their existence, um, they see a whole nother perspective. I mean, their whole mm -hmm. perspective of life changes and, and shifts to a whole nother, they see a broader view of everything, you know, instead of being in the drama or being a part of, the matrix that is so tunnel visioned, you know, it, it becomes much more broader. And I, it's important that people start meditating and, and connecting with their guides. And it's not something you know, that you're going to get overnight. You're not going to wake up one day and all of a sudden be instantly so, enlightened. You got to, you really got to put the time in. Like you said, meditate, ground, find yourself. The five things that I keep getting from my, my guides over and over and over again. Five most important things right now. Number one, love. Nothing is more powerful than the power of love. Mm -hmm. Number two, to uh, ground yourself. Um, number three, to forgive. Uh, number four is to uh, maintain a high vibration. And how do you, well, by doing every, it's number one, grounding. <laughs> and the other, the last one, the food that pardon we me? Take, right? oh, I'm, I didn't catch that. I'm sorry. The words, the words that we speak, the things that we say, the things we think, the food that we put in our bodies, all those things. Um, play a part in our vibrational frequency, right? Definitely, definitely. Um, people on here don't really know. I don't think there's a whole lot of spiritual people on here. Mm -hmm. You want to get away together? Never doesn't like it when I'm on here. He knows when I'm re like video chatting, and he wants my attention like all the time. Oh, you know, have you? Yeah. Yeah. No, I can't. <laughs> I thought you were David Chalmers. Who's that? Who's David Chalmers? I have no idea. And uh, what what you're what we're talking about? Um, how good is your herb smoke, bro? Uh, apparently, a lot of people don't get. They think that you're high or that you're um, a little crazy. Exactly, um, but. Once you put the work and the effort and the time in, you'll understand a little bit more. Um, don't be afraid to go down that rabbit hole to question everything. Um, there's so many things that people assume are the truth. That's absolute hot air and bullshit and lies. You know. Uh, Did you see the the? Um, it was a a cryon um, thing. The cryon. Uh, you know, I get his his messages. Mm -hmm. I just want to read it really fast. Um, okay. Because it, it pertains pretty much to what you were just saying. Uh, let's see. Oh, 
Oh, did you see the little girl? She's like, I'm not going to. She refuses to eat meat. <laughs> <laughs> so cute on uh, Facebook. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you are a light worker, it's time to step into the light. The things that you thought you knew well may, well may have shifted slightly. This includes what you believe is truth. When you start to turn when you start to turn on the light in a dark room, you see new things. Perhaps your truth was based on seeing things dimly in the dark and assuming what they were. But when these things but when these same things are eliminated and you clearly see them, truth becomes more Truth becomes fully revealed. Oh, you did comment in this. I, I'm seeing it now. Uh, truth can change based on the revelations of time. It changes when the light is turned on. So whoever is watching, if you guys want to know it, you're going for crazy. Okay. Well, go for crazy. Out the channel. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Uh, people that are that are spiritually aware and consciously aware should only be in this chat because... If you don't know what we're talking about and you have no desire to know what we're talking about and you want to be <laughs> immature and say those things, then mm -hmm. it just, yeah. Um, anyway, so it's crazy because like there's 400 billion bits of information going on all around us, right? Mm -hmm. And our brains and our eyes can only comprehend or see, I mean, we see 1% of the spectrum of, of the spectrum, 1%. That means that there's there's 400 billion bits of information going all around us. What we call space is not really space because our brains and our eyes can only comprehend 30,000, 40,000 of those bits. So what we're talking about is not some foo-foo stuff. It's being proven, you know, through scientific methods. Um, it's just funny because in, someday people are going to be like, wow, what a dumbass I was for, mm -hmm. for, you know, being a dick and saying stupid things about things that they clearly knew what the fuck they were talking about. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Yeah. You know, one of my favorite metaphysical experiments is called the double slit experiment. Yeah. And it shows the importance on focused intention. Mm -hmm. So what they do is they, they, for the, everybody that's not familiar with this, they, they shoot these photons at this wall basically. And uh, if your focused intention is on it, it'll scatter everywhere. There'll be this random scatter every time. But if you're not focusing on it and they shoot the photons into the wall, they're the same every time, the same, same, same. Once the focused intention is there, scatter. Um, this is what our thoughts do. It changes reality. Thoughts are manifesting quicker and quicker, faster and faster, now more than ever. If you haven't had the opportunity to watch the video to The yeah. Secret, or read the book, The Secret by Rhonda Byrne, I highly recommend it. One of the things that you'll learn is that everything you put out to the universe comes back to you. And that is basically the secret, but you really need to surrender to creator, source, whatever you want to call that entity. Surrender and know that they have your back and that when you fall back, source or creator, whatever is going to catch you. And it was that at that point in my own life, you know, like I said, I was a child and family therapist. I have a uh, patent pending program designed to help families who are at risk of dissolution, children going through their reunification process, mm -hmm. and for parents in need of parenting classes. It was approved by the area's largest human service facility, and I was working, at, working that in a three-county area, but I knew there was something greater, something more I had to do. So I went out and I basically surrendered to universe, and that's when I got what I can only call is, is a galactic download. Mm -hmm. I was flooded with this information telling me that you have to build this website, even though I knew nothing about building websites. And I built one from scratch, taught myself. Yeah. And you have, to, you have to put this information out there about the awakening. The critical mass wasn't high enough when I got that uh, galactic download. So I had to do that. And then they said, uh, oh, well, you have to do uh, interviews and tel uh, radio shows and conferences. I'm like, hey, you got the wrong guy. I'm an introvert. And they said, no, no. They said, no, you're the one. You have to do this. And I understand now why, because I'm basically the voice for the introverts. And yeah. so that's why I have to put it out there to people. And yeah. it's not easy. You know, this is as much as I do. It's not easy to get in front of this camera, especially if you are an introvert. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, I'm a pretty shy person unless I'm speaking to an audience that 
is intellectually aware of mm -hmm. what I'm speaking about. But I mean, even 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 people that are not intellectual are aware of of who we truly are, mm -hmm. deeper depth inside of us that goes beyond the mind made self. Um, you know, it's a great feeling to explain these things to people mm -hmm. and to see their minds just like, oh, you know, shift. You know, it's really an amazing experience to have people shift into the curiosity of these things mm -hmm. or, or have that innate feeling within them that, wow, like, I don't quite know what you're saying, but I, it does make sense. It does resonate, you know? Tasha, have you ever done this? Say you're at like a grocery store or something and you're walking around and you're just seeing like basically zombies pushing their carts, but you catch the eye of somebody that's awake and aware and without even communicating, you have that understanding with that person. It's like, you get it. Definitely. And mm -hmm. I just blocked that guy, so he won't be mm -hmm. talking trash anymore. Okay, well, yeah, so it is. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, we can just talk. I mean, it doesn't really matter about the views. I mean, I, I hope no. that people do enjoy talking with us, but um, I, I, it just sucks to get uh, someone saying something stupid. I mean, you could just be chatting on Skype or something alone, you know? Mm -hmm. if you want to do that? I don't know if you feel like doing that or not, because um, we're not really getting anywhere with these people, obviously. <laughs> That's okay. I don't mind. You know what? Because I can always copy this video and share it on yeah. um, my N5D YouTube channel. I've got 136,000 subscribers there that would love to hear it. Yeah. So are so. you recording it now? I believe I have it set up to where... Um, it automatically records it and, and uh, up, uploads it to my YouTube. Oh, cool. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I, I can copy it from there. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Yay. I'll send it. I'll, I'll post it there and I'll send it over to you. Okay, so cool. I want to be able to edit out like those things that, you know, that I said. I um, wouldn't worry about it. Don't yeah, worry about it. Conversation, right? Just let it go. Hey, it's, it's real. You keep it real. It's fine. Just be you. I know that YouTube, um, does live streaming now. I wonder mm -hmm. if you're allowed to have, are you allowed to guess people in on there? Do you know? Oh, no idea. No idea. Hopefully. I know you can do that on Google Chrome or um, not, what is that? Google Hangouts. Hangouts. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. I've been there a long time. Mm hmm Yeah. Uh, yeah, I blocked you. I blocked that guy twice. <laughs> He's got two different, uh, obviously, sign-ins. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I'm always encouraging people to question everything. One of the things I love questioning is religion um, because we've all been brainwashed with the greatest story ever told. And the one thing that I like asking people who are religious, there's a verse in the Bible, Genesis 126, where it says, let us make man in our own image after our own likeness. Mm -hmm. the, question, the question is, who is this us and our? It's, it can't be the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. This is Genesis, the first chapter. So Jesus wasn't even born then. But if you do your homework, as Jordan Maxwell says, and you study the Bible, you realize that the Elohim are mentioned early and often all throughout the, the, the Bible. And if you do the etymology of Elohim, you have, you have El as in God. El as in elders. God um, it means El. And then Ohim, is the plural of the prefix. So El Ohim, the gods, let us, the gods, make man in our own image. These are creator gods. This isn't creator or source. These are creator gods that wrote the Bible that have kept us in subservience, control, and conformity for yeah. thousands of years. Oh, do your homework. Years, yeah. yeah, yeah. So do your homework. Yeah. Another thing that I've, you got to question too, you know, there's four different blood types. A, B, A, B, and O, two different RH values, positive or negative. It's impossible to have so many different races and, and ethnicities from four different blood types, or from just Adam and Eve, excuse me. It, that's impossible. You cannot have four different blood types with two different RH values from Adam and Eve. That, so every ethnic race here, how did we get here? Well, we were either- You were created seated here we could have been seated here from various galactic star nations as an experiment to yeah. see how we would all get along if you look at the 
oh, what are those things? Uh, Zechariah Sitchin, uh, the Sumerian tablets, the cuneiform on there. What he found was that our DNA was genetically ma manipulated and there was various um, races of basically slaves that came here that, that were created by the Anunnaki to uh, mine the gold for them. Or scenario three, a combination of both. And, you know, just keep your, your minds open because science isn't going to explain everything. And wow. despite what they want us to believe with their hot air and bullshit, I'm not buying most of it. No, no just like we all came from a big bang. Give me a break. No, that's no, that shit didn't happen. No, <laughs> no. I mean, no. In, in the story that we come from monkeys or primates is hilarious. Mm -hmm. so hilarious. If that were the case, then the monkeys would turn into humans eventually, wouldn't they? <laughs> You What's know? interesting, though, is that we actually have two less chromosomes than, than the monkeys? basically everything. You know, we only have 44. And basically, every other kind of um, animal, well, including the monkeys, have 46. Hmm. Something got messed with. But this is one thing I was talking about earlier, too. Greg Braden proved that we only have 20 of our 46 codons in our DNA turned on. And if somebody can figure out how to turn on the remaining 44 codons in their DNA, they can do anything. And that's what I've been working on um, myself. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, people think that this is like stuff that we're just, people think that things are just being made up. But mm -hmm. they're not. It's just that we've been lied to. We continuously are being lied to about the truth of who we are and, mm -hmm. and the, how, I, how our bodies work. I mean... I know when I went to school for anatomy and physiology and kinesiology at, you know, 21 years old. Wow. I mean, it's like going to school to be a doctor. It really is mm -hmm. like having to know the names of every, you know, uh, everything. It's crazy what you have mm -hmm. to learn to be a therapist. Yeah. Um, I was like, oh my God, the body doesn't give a shit what you're, I mean, of course it does. Of course there's a connection, but I mean, it's doing its own thing. It doesn't, mm -hmm. it, it doesn't care what's going on, you know, out externally, you know, with us, it has its own system and all these amazing, I mean, have you ever seen like an anime of um, the life of a cell? It's no, but they're constant. I know that every millisecond they're constantly regenerating themselves. It's like walking and little, little proteins floating and they're, I mean, it's crazy. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. I don't think people know that. I don't think people mm -hmm. have any idea what ma magnificent beings they are, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. I so, Tasha, I have these um, Generation 3 night vision goggles, Yo. and uh, you can't go 10 minutes without seeing a UFO. Oh, my God, I bet. And there's an app that you can get on your cell phone. It's called yeah. Sky, S-K-E-Y-E. And when you hold it up there, it shows you, you know, what satellites are going by and what planets and constellations are out there. But when you see a UFO, uh -huh. UFO or a light going like this, and then it just goes, pew, yeah. that's not a satellite. That's not a planet. That's yeah. one time I was, I was kind of just laying back on my chair. I've got these uh, zero gravity chairs and I just kind of was leaning back by my pool and I, I was facing the Gulf coast and I live right on the water here. And uh, I saw this huge cigar-shaped mothership coming in off the coast. And as soon as I locked in on him, he disappeared. disappeared? Yeah, it was monstrous, <laughs> huge. Cloaking, cloaking huge. Cloaking. Yes, yes. Did you ever see a UFO and then try to tell somebody, hey, it's right there. And it could still be there, huge, and they can't see it. Mm -hmm. Well, just like my orb, my orb photos. Have you ever seen my orb photos? Yes, I have. Impressive. They're huge. You know that people seriously say to me, "That's just water, water, water." I'm like, "What? What do you look at? You're kidding me." No. It's unbelievable that people actually just say it's water, water, or it's just dust. I'm like. Can you really look, look, can you really look at that picture and call it dust? No. Like, please, don't, please don't, you know, insult your own intelligence here. Mm -hmm. It's just, I mean, here's the original photo too. You know, the, the ones that I have up on my Facebook are blown mm -hmm. up. Yeah, so that is not dust. No. <laughs> no. Yeah, and it's amazing, the sacred geometry that's in them. Mm-hmm. Like here's another one from that day.
Beautiful. Absolutely. You can't really, see, but you see them all. Oh, I see it. Yeah, yeah. This was me back in the days. Ah. <sighs> and you've improved with age. Skinny girl. I was yeah. really too skinny. I don't want to be that skinny again. Yeah. But um, there's my brother and my mom. Wow, your mom looks like she could be. Yeah, our cousin. She, she looks really young. She doesn't look that young anymore. This was no. years ago, but mm -hmm. yeah, that's another story for another time, mm -hmm. if that will even come to. You know, on N5D, I have an article. It's called The Third Eye Mirror Meditation, mm. and I don't recommend this for the novice because it's going to freak you out. But I ask Universe Creator Source, my posse, to show me something. Show me anything that will make my jaw drop in a very good way. I don't want to see crazy shit, but yeah. I want to see stuff that just makes me go, wow, that, that was totally amazing. So anyway, it's called a third eye mirror meditation. And what you do is you have a mirror in front of you and you have a candle in between the mirror and you. And you're looking at your third eye in the mirror. And you just, what you want to do is, if you've ever seen the, like those 3D magic eye things, and you have to relax your eyes in order to see the th third dimensional image that's in there, relax your eyes when you're doing that. And basically what happens is your mind goes into the alpha state, and what you're going to see is something that's going to blow your mind if you're ready for it. But first, I highly recommend that you protect yourself with white light and ask your guides, you know, yeah. guardian angels and all, to help protect you. Yeah. Because what you're going to see is going to flip you out hopefully in a great way, um, you're going to see yourself turn into male, female, old, young, every possible thing. One time I actually saw this. So are these like it, all images of all our lifetimes or something? What I think they are are aspects of ourselves, but the, wind, the, the mirror is also a portal and you're very vulnerable at that point. And, and here's a great example. One time I was doing that third eye mirror meditation. And then I saw this, this ogre with fang-like teeth and big red eyes, huge friggin' head, just staring back at me. And I fucked up. What I said was, I asked that you leave immediately. You're not welcome here. Only those of the highest vibration of truth, love, and light are welcome here. But I mm -hmm. fucked up. What I should have said was, how can I help you? Yeah. Well, it might have been benevolent, but I was intimidated by its looks. Maybe I was the one that looked scary to him. Who knows? And maybe wow. he, came, he came came to me for help. So, and, that you say, so what happened after that? After you he went that? away. He disappeared. And I continued doing that third eye mirror meditation. Uh -huh. But the thing I wanted to point out about that third eye mirror meditation, because you were talking about the orbs, yeah. I was doing that on a different situation. And this huge orange orb was just like hovering over my shoulder while, while I was doing that third eye me mirror meditation. It was probably the size of a softball that was just hanging out there and you need a mirror in front of you, and then you need a candle lit, right? Well, yeah, okay. say that again. I, you broke up a little. You need a mirror behind you? No, just in front of you. Oh, just a mirror in front of you. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And then the candle in front of the mirror, in between you and the mirror, uh -huh. and shut off the lights and just focus on that third eye. Okay. Get into that relaxed state. You're ready for this. You can handle it. And I'm be, I'll be curious. Let me know. You know, text me or something. Yeah. Um, about what you see because i i'd be really curious to find out the dmt has been amazing i mean i it's so i mean amazing i mean you know the few people you know my cousin i did it with my cousin and my friend kaloha and it was a little too much for them um not for me <laughs> i mean me either there's nothing that really can scare, I feel like scare me. But when you brought that up about that, that you know, being whatever it was with the fangs and everything, it mm -hmm. reminded me, uh, for some reason, it made me think about um, Phil Schneider. Remember the, mm -hmm. remember, mm -hmm. remember Phil Schneider? Yes. How he was, he was, um, you know, he worked for the government. Um, mm -hmm. He was working at, underneath ground. He was building pretty much the facilities that our government has underneath the ground. Um, secret facilities. Deep um, underground military bases, yeah. dumbs for yeah. sure. Yeah. yeah. So they mm -hmm. were blowing up the rocks um, to build and some like black like smoke and whatever was coming through up from the ground. So they lowered him down to find out what the hell was going on or what it was. And when he got to 
this other level, he was greeted by this great extraterrestrial being. And he immediately goes for his gun. Immediately. Now, I truly believe, I truly believe, Greg, that if he had not go, gone for his gun, the extraterrestrial would have not gutted him the way he did. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because, I mean, who, I mean, it, it's just crazy. We immediately, that's our reaction immediately is to go for a gun, go for violence, mm -hmm. go for killing someone. I mean, you know, I truly believe that if he had not done that, because the extraterrestrial knew what his intention was, obviously, you know, because he's reaching for his gun, you know what I mean? But who, who would have known how that would have turned out had he not reached for his gun, you know? And, and, or sent and, love, sent that intention of love yeah. to, the, to that thing. That's not mm -hmm. something we're taught to do. We're, ta we're taught to compete and, and beat each other up for things that, you know, we want from one another. You know, it's, mm -hmm. that's what people have to realize is that it's not natural. Violence is not a natural, it's not an innate human thing. It's not normal to be competitive and, and to be um, violent. You know, we have a mouth and a voice to use, communicate with one another, you know, which is above, you know, that primitive, ah, oh, I'm going to beat you up. Beating someone up doesn't do anything. It doesn't resolve anything. So it's just so primitive. You know? when, that, when that event happens, too, that's all there is. That's all there is, is that love. Perfect, unconditional love from creator source. Uh, there's nothing else. It's very intense, too. Mm -hmm. Intense in a beautiful, beautiful way. Yeah, yeah. I can't wait for everybody to experience that. Yeah, me too. And if it, mm -hmm. just imagine if everybody had had that experience. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, we'd be living on a different planet. The world mm -hmm. would be so different. People wouldn't feel you know unworthy and feel like they have to lash out at somebody because they feel insecure and bad about themselves. Um, and I don't think most people even know that though, Greg. And that's why I pointed out to them, you know, I'm sorry that you feel so bad about yourself. I'm sorry that somebody, somebody spoke to you that way, you know, cause usually that's where it begins is, you know, they're abused verbally or physically, you know, and so they're holding on to this pain body, mm -hmm. you want to call it the pain body from Eckhart Tolle, or if you want to call it the emotional poison that, um, mastery of love, uh, Don Miguel Reese, I love that book, Mastery of Love. It's an amazing book for anybody in any relationship of your life. It is a perfect book for people to read. Mm -hmm. It talks about the emotional poison that we carry and that we can't hold on to it anymore, so we give it to other people because we don't want to hold on to it anymore. But um, it's it's not normal. It's really not normal. It's not, an, a, you know, when a baby's born, a baby's not worried. The baby's not, like, feeling unworthy. The baby's not insecure about anything you know it's just ah. i mean it's so nice to see a baby you know a, a dog could just be like running around and the baby's cracking up like mm -hmm. we need to be more like that again you know we need to just enjoy life and not take it so seriously and just relax you know i find that so many people probably i'm, I'm gonna guess at least 95 percent of the population um it, are, are, they just conform to everything willingly without questioning anything and most people will pretend to be what society expects them to be and will end up going to their grave never truly knowing who they were yeah. Yeah. who are you? you you're not like me I'm you know I'm Greg Prescott I'm a webmaster this no I'm not no I've come here and I've done this millions of times I'm a spark of divine being and I'm going to, going to return back to that uh, spark of divine being, being where I came from. And, uh, and we're forever, we never stop existing. We never die. This yeah. is just a meat suit. It's, a, you know, it's just a glimpse of one aspect of ourselves. Yeah. Um, so look for that spark in everybody. Everybody's got that spark of divinity. When this event happens, this meat suit is gone. We're going to recognize each other from our energy signature. Your energy signature is developed from the minute, second, hour, day, month, year that you're born. The millisecond determines your energy signature. You could be born to the exact same millisecond as somebody else you know, but your geographical, geographical location changes that energy signature. So your energy signature is complete, completely unique and we'll recognize each other as if we're looking at each other right now right. through our energy signatures.
Yeah, it, it, then that's what happens when you when you leave the body too. You it's you wake up from the dream that we're in. We're in a dream. Well, most people are sleeping in a dream, right? Mm-hmm. Um, it's just it's just a whole nother level of consciousness. It's just a, it's it's magical. That's the best thing to use. Tasha, doesn't it seem like sometimes our dreams are more real than reality? Oh God, yeah. Especially when I actually traveled on that ship. Mm-hmm. That was mind blowing. I mean, wow. I didn't try to. I didn't try to um, astral travel. It's not like I. I didn't know how I was going to go on to uh, a specific race's ship. I just knew that I wanted to go on their ship, and it was pretty amazing how. Because mm-hmm. I, I, I literally like before I went to sleep. I didn't intend. I didn't like meditate and intend and ask my guides to take me on a ship. No, that's not how it happened. I just said, Bashar, I want to go on your ship. Take me on your craft. I want to fly through space, you know? Again, it wasn't Bashar's race because it was a, they were like seven, eight feet tall beings. Um, yeah. They were the Palladians that I'm connected to, you know, my oversoul's connected to um, mm-hmm. that took me on the ship. But, oh, my gosh. It's like, so it was. it's more real than this reality. Yeah. And it, people have that you notice- kind of they're not they can't comprehend what we're saying you know mm-hmm. and you notice too that for most of us when we dream you're not looking at a watch you have no idea what time is and that's exactly what it's like on the other side of the veil yeah. when when you finally pass on and go to the other side of the veil don't think you're going to be sleeping at all because there's no time you have no reason to sleep we need to sleep to recharge these the meat suits you know yeah. and that's it there's no time. As a matter of fact, time is different on every planet. Right. If, if, if I lived on, we'll say, Mars, Mars has an average day of, what is it, 28, 29 hours long. Okay, so I just turned 57. On Mars, I might be 50 or 49 or something like that. You know, time is only relevant to this planet. And when you leave this third dimensional construct, there is no time. Yeah, it, it's. I, I hardly ever live in time anyway. Now I, I never know what day it is. I never. Mm-hmm. Know, I mean, I really, you know, thank good God, for you. Thank God I don't have to, you know, mm-hmm. live yeah. in that time. Even though I have a clock right there, I, it's mostly to have there for temperature because I always want to know what the temperature is outside. Which I have the window. I have the sign glass door open. It's getting chilly. Mm. It's really cold. <laughs> Well, time is just absolute hot air and bullshit. It's been so manipulated and twisted. The late Jose Arguez, he was one of the founders of Harmonic Convergence back in 87. He said he went to uh, investigate uh, Lord Pacal's tomb in Mexico, this Mayan uh, elder. And the one thing he got that was the most important message from Lord Pacal's tomb is that we need to live without time. And that time has been so distorted right. through the you know Julian calendar, the Gre- Gregorian calendar. You know we have all these different months. He said, if anything, we need to convert to a thirteen moon calendar that's in symbiosis with nature, and that would make complete sense to me. But because everything's work based on the work week and TV scheduling and all this crap, yeah. it'd be almost impossible to do at this point. Oh, there's so much that needs. There's so. I mean, the future that I see is dramatically different even when it comes down to the animals i mean you know the survivor of of you know get killed or be you know eat or be eaten you know that mm-hmm. i mean that's the 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 dimension we've been living in this duality of and it, it should i mean it's just we're ready to evolve for sure i know mm-hmm. i am I, I know that i don't want to come back to people gutting fish and using them there's blood everywhere and they're using them to catch other fish. Like that is just crazy to me. It's loot. I know it's normal, but it's fucking crazy to me. It's not normal to me. You know, there's these planets where people, the, the, the beings that live on these planets, they live in harmony with all the animals. You know, there is no killing each other for food because they're vibrating at a higher level, you know? And I feel like I'm doing that here now. And but I'm doing it alone. <laughs> I'm not alone. You're not alone. You're not alone. You know what I mean. But that's the beauty of when this event happens. You know, like I said, we transform into light bodies. Yeah. 
there's no more need to eat. <laughs> there's no more need to even worry about this meat suit anymore or money, politics, religion, all that stuff. Yeah, um, complete transformation. Yeah. But, so. But everything has to collapse. Everything's going to collapse first. The economy and everything's going to collapse and people are going to freak out because they think that, that that's a bad thing. Not necessarily. I have a feeling, Tasha, that there's a lot of light workers and white hats that are working that have actually held up uh, the Federal Reserve. It should have collapsed in 2013 when its charter dissolved. But uh, I have a feeling a lot of people are helping to hold that up because had it collapsed, had the dollar died, imagine everybody losing their bank accounts and everything. Um, the, FD, the FDIC, they might be FDI insured, but so are all the derivatives, the trillions in derivatives. Who do you think is going to get their money first? The government through the FDIC, through their insurance of derivatives or us? <laughs> Whatever you have in the bank, it's gone. Oh, yeah. That's why you should not have your money in the bank. Yeah, buy physical yeah. gold and, or silver. Definitely. Yeah, I'm sure at that point, cash won't even matter even if you do have it. No, no. But what I recommend also is getting junk silver, like buying old uh, dimes and quarters. And, for example, you know, if you wanted to barter with a, a silver dime, it might have the silver melt value of three or three dollars and fifty cents. You could say, "Here, I'll, I'll give you this for you know a dozen eggs or some bread or something like that." Yeah. You have something tangible, like Bitcoin. It's a digital currency. If an EMP hits the planet and wipes out all digital computer uh, forms of of data entry, right. you, you once again you're broken. You, you have nothing. Right. So. But I honestly don't think we're going to take that. Initially, I thought we were going to take a, a step timelines. backward. I know. These timelines, we keep going back and forth on. Right? Exactly. 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 That was the initial timeline. And it might have happened like three, four years ago that we we're going to take a step backward before we took this exponential leap forward. But I don't see that anymore. I think no. this, because we have so much, so much help from not just you know, these white hats in, in government and stuff, but from the galactics and, um, you know, all this help from the other side of the veil, yeah. that we're going to bypass that. And when that event happens, it's just going to be an instant transition. No step backwards, just rocketing forward. That's a beautiful, that's a beautiful timeline. I, I hope that that's the timeline that we are on, or that we go to. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So the event, are you talking about, are you, are you talking about, I know what you mean by the event, but um, is it Cobra? Are you talking about Cobra event? What Cobra talks about? Uh, not necessarily. Um, I've been shown what the event is um, and felt it. Um, I'm not sure exactly what his perception, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, every time he has a, a new update, I post it on N5D Alternative okay. News. What's the last? What's the last things that he said? I haven't watched it in the last couple months. So uh, something. Well, yeah, something about the toplet bombs again, and you know, it's, it, he's rehashing a lot of uh, stuff. Basically, um, I guess it, you know, nothing's new. And yeah. we've we've been hearing this from a repeating source yeah. from various sources. Actually, nothing's new. Waiting on changes. Mm -hmm. Well, no, no, we're creating the change. I believe in the Hopi. What they said, we are the ones that we have been waiting for. Nothing we can make that change. The hmm? Master of Love, the Mastery of Love, Don Miguel Reese, he talks mm -hmm. about the Hopi. Mm -hmm. that, that this is that that was their way of, of being, or what is it? Um, I am. Mm -hmm. oh, I think it was the Hopi. I can't find my book. You know what? I lend my book out to people. I lend my books out to people. Yes. And I forget that I lend them out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you know what? I figure I read them already, and it's good that they're in somebody else's hands. Hopefully. That's yeah, I agree. Oh, yes, of course. Yeah, yeah. And what the bleep? Yeah, I've seen, yeah. I've owned this, I've owned this for like 10 years, and mm -hmm. I watch it over and over. And now I think I'm at a point where I, it, it makes all sense to me, of course. But there's so much information packed into this, you know, because it's a three disc. Um, it's a three disc. Mm -hmm. And on one side, it has, you know, the documentary. And then on the other side, there's interviews with all of the neuroscientists and all the people that are on it. Mm -hmm. And, um, I've tried showing this to so many people and they just, unfortunately, most people just don't, yeah. Just, yeah. Just don't care. They don't get it. I love those kind of movies that make you question reality, that expand your mind. Um, 
my favorite though are time travel movies. My hair is like a freaking mess. Um, Beautiful. Ah, uh, thank you. My the time travel movies like uh, this is one. I think it's Warren Beatty. Uh, Somewhere in time. Somewhere in time. Somewhere in time. It's an older movie, probably from the seventies or eighties, but. Um, Okay. Yeah, I love it. It's uh, you know anything that involves time travel. Um, uh, Peggy Sue got married. Back to the Future. Have you know. You seen, have you seen Cloud Atlas though? Mm -mm. That is an amazing. That's a more recent movie with tons of um, awesome actors and actresses like Tom Hanks. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's so many amazing actors and actresses. Uh, Hal Berry, and it, mm -hmm. it, what it is, if most people can't understand it, they can't follow it. But it, it's it's showing you many different lifetimes. So there's all these great characters, all these great actors and actresses, right? And um, oh, you just have to watch Cloud Atlas. You have got to watch it. At least watch the watch the um, like if you go open a YouTube uh, a YouTube if you open the YouTube and you you just do Cloud Atlas, you'll be able mm -hmm. to see um, a really good trailer of it. And it's cool. really cool because it shows it's showing you. It's showing you uh, a lifetime, like say Tom Hanks and Hail Berry, okay? So in one lifetime, it's one, you know, uh, age, you know, where it's like modern times and they're coming together for whatever reason. And then it shifts and, and that's with every, all these characters, right? And then they show you another time, they show you another aspect, another lifetime with that same person and how you come together again in a different, mm -hmm. total different way, different era of time. One of them's like way in the future. One of them's like way in the past, almost like uh, Game of Thrones kind of, you know, barbaric way. I mean, it's amazing. That movie is amazing. Most people are just like, I didn't get it. Well, you should get it because it's the truth. It's how our, yeah. it's how our, our multidimensional selves is, is really living, <laughs> you know? People have no idea how many soul contracts they actually made on the other side of the veil to meet with certain people at some juncture. And sometimes we're just chasing one person and had no clue and they'd move to one city and you'd move there maybe a year after they left and so on and so forth. But there's so, even sometimes you might just have a quick conversation with say a cashier at Walmart that made her day and that you made some kind of connection with, that was your soul contract. You were supposed to make that creation, uh, create that, that connection with that person right. and exchange codes with that person, which is what we do. We share our energy codes with each other and we right. gather them as, just through you know, our conversations that we have. And, you know, being an empath, I'm just like, kind of like, you, know, you feel people's energy and some people's energy, you just don't want to be near. You know, you don't want those codes. <laughs> You know? Yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, um, <laughs> it's like my entire family. <laughs> unfortunately. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. It is what it is. You know, I hope that someday that they, they realize that um, falling in the dark and, and segregating from one another is not the healthy, loving way to live. You know, mm -hmm. the dark has literally taken over my family, like in oh. the saddest way. Yeah. So, um, I can no longer be a part of that. Like I have had to totally cut myself off from my mother, which is very difficult to do, you know, because I was really close to her, but it's so toxic. It's such a toxic relationship or environment that, um, you know, as sad as it is to not have her in my life, it's, it's more healthier for me than to not, you know, because it's just so toxic. Have you actually you don't necessarily even have to do this in front of her, you know, through vocal conversation, but have you actually forgiven her, you know, at least on a, your higher self mm -hmm. forgiven her and you and yourself as well. Yeah. There's a lot that I've gone through with her. Um, mm -hmm. and of course, yeah, I've definitely forgiven her. Good. My father, um, n now does a little girl inside of me still is still heartbroken. Of course. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I, Maybe someday I'll be, you know, I'll be able to heal that. Um, but I don't think so. I, I think so. You think so? Yeah. Yeah, I do. Well, I don't think, I don't think you, I don't, well, I guess because it's still going on, I guess because mm -hmm. um, there is no, you know, communion or love there. Um, 
it's just so, oh, I just have to tell you about it for, well, I don't have to tell you about it, but my, my grandmother was, um, at six years old, she was raped by her father and her uncle. And then she had, a, she watched her father chase her mother down the street with a shotgun and okay. her, mother, her mother didn't return for six years. She thought that her dad killed her mom. And so her uncle, I mean, just the most abuse, just horrible. So she, she ran away with her little sister and. You know, so my grandmother is, and you know, when my mother was a little girl, my grandmother was into black magic and she used to do voodoo dolls and seances. Mm -hmm. and she was really deep into that stuff. And of course she was abused horribly as a kid. So it makes sense why she would want to get into black magic. But, um, my grandmother used to draw aliens and uh, UFOs and talk about how they've taken her to their planet. And I mean, she used to be really into all that stuff. And now it's like all she talks about are FEMA camps. You know, she doesn't have that connection anymore with, with mm -hmm. whatever being. Whatever what do you think being. happened? Life. I have an idea. What do you think happened, though? Life. Life. Getting older, getting bitter, having to work at 74, however old she is. You know, that's what I think happened. Hmm. Is it possible that she might have had some kind of energy attachment, Archon, or um, something like that? Oh, well, yeah, def I mean, I think that a lot, of course, she opened the floodgates when she was doing those seances and playing mm -hmm. with voodoo dolls, you know, and, mm -hmm. and wishing harm upon another person, which she continuously has done towards me for no yeah. reason at all. So when you wish dark upon somebody, you best believe you're going to get dark in return in your life. It's just the way it works. It actually works much stronger than that. When you use black magic on somebody, Whatever you put at them is going to come back to you at least three, five, ten times worse. It's just the way it is. Uh, so if you want to dabble in magic, you know, I, I highly recommend, if anything, Wicca, yeah. which I've used myself and it works wonders, but I only use it sparingly for and love. it's very, very powerful. I use it for binding people. For binding people. Yeah. Why don't you explain yeah. that a little bit to us? Well, I had to bind basically this guy who's the god of war. Um, I'm not going to mention any names. What do you mean by that? What do you mean by he's the god of war, though? Um, if you break his name down and uh, through etymology, it's literally the god of war. And um, his behavior became very erratic um, and abusive to his clients who ended up following him through me interviewing him and putting some of some of his articles on m5d and giving him free advertisement on m5d right and uh he would um supposedly do these clearings on people and then to women he would berate them telling them to stfu and drop on your knees and beg jesus for forgiveness what? stuff like that and people wow. that follow m5d know that i don't go down that religion road and uh, to, to be yeah. that condescending and belligerent and verbally abusive to his clients and then having them come back to me, uh -huh. um, I told him, I said, that's it, you're done. And, and then this, this was the second and third time that it actually happened. The first time I took his word for it that it was their issue, not his, but there's it kept coming back to me. There's someone you love, someone just, he became a fan of you. Oh, awesome, awesome, right. thank you, mm -hmm. thank you. But uh, yeah, this guy, um, so after I, I, I told him, you're done, I'm not going to support you anymore, I pulled all of his articles and videos off of the N5D website and YouTube channel, and he was hounding me and threatening me and uh, to, with a lot of shit. And uh, that was the point of where I said, fuck it, I'm going to bind him. And I bound him through white magic. And what you do is you just get a piece of paper and you write down you know, all the things that you don't like about him. And you also send him love as well. Right. And then you bind it in, a, you wrap it up and fold it until it's a tiny little, little square like that. Wrap, um, what I used was some leather cord around it and then take it outside and burn it. Mm. Yeah, I've heard Dolores Cannon talk about doing that with like uh, contracts that we set up for ourselves. Mm -hmm. We don't want to. Yeah, yeah play in anymore you know i no mm -hmm. longer this no longer is going to be part of my my experience mm -hmm. 
So that's what that's called binding. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. It after you did that, that it, it he stopped. That was it. It's so friggin' powerful. Wow. Uh, and you got to be careful. Like I said, you just don't want to bind people. And I mean, he became very abusive to me as well. And that was the point where I said, fuck it. This, he needs to be stopped. I can read energy when I'm watching a video. I can mm -hmm. read energy from each individual person. Mm -hmm. And I loved Eric's energy. Eric's mm -hmm. energy was so, so genuine and loving, you know? And then you, you know, you're shining your light, you know, um, through the video. Thank you. You know, you really are. You really were. And one thing that he mentioned that was really cool, though, is, you know, as you know, I, I'm a smoker and I've been smoking since I was 18. I'm four, uh, 57 now. But he said that there's this energy implant that's actually benevolent that's in, in me that prevents me from being hurt from tobacco or whatever. You know, I, I don't have a smoker's cough. You don't hear me hacking all the time. I wake right. up in the morning just Doing being good. able to talk as I'm talking right now. So it's, yeah, it's pretty cool. Like, I think a lot of that plays, I think a lot of that has to do with your beliefs about what you're putting in your body too. Mm -hmm. If you believe that what you're putting in your body is so bad, then it's yeah. going, it's going to have that effect on you, you know? Well, yeah. And well, you know, I smoke the organic uh, American spirit brand. But I mean, but I mean, if somebody believes that this is going to kill me, you know, mm -hmm. then more than likely it's going to kill you. You know, people don't realize how much of their beliefs run their world completely. <laughs> Like, and ultimately, what is there to fear? Okay, so I die. I become well, really what I'm die. supposed to be to begin with. Right. You go back to what you were before you were confined in this human body. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now, one of the most profound things I've ever heard, <clears throat> I'm not going to mention <clears throat> the person that said it, because he's, he's a fucktard, but he did say something that was really profound. Um, he said, once the sperm fertilizes the egg, you begin the dying process. You were alive before that. And it's so true. You were alive before you incarnated here. That was your life. We're dying every day. Right. You can't yeah. stop that. Well, right. actually, the event will stop that. But um, well, yeah. this meat suit will die eventually and will become those light bodies. So don't get all caught up in what, what it is that you look like, what you're wearing. Right. That shit doesn't matter. No. It doesn't matter. But at the same time, love, it's important that you love yourself. Of course. Wholeheartedly, though. Not, mm -hmm. not in a conceited, stuck-up way, but in a loving, love yourself. And I mean really, really love yourself. Like, Can you do that right now, honestly? Yeah, I do, yeah, I do it all the time. I really do. But you were mentioning how something about weight. Yeah. And fighting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but if I, but I know that that's, that's just a, I know how beautiful I am. I know that I'm beautiful mm -hmm. inside and out. Um, mm -hmm. And for the most part, I, I, for the most part, I am loving to myself. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. No, I'm with you on that because, there, you know, sometimes I think about aspects about myself that I'm just not crazy about. I wish that, you know, my, I had that voice that was like velvet, but apparently this is the voice I was given. And What's yeah. wrong with your voice? I don't know. I, can't, I know I can't sing very well. <laughs> oh. well, amongst every, a lot of other people, mm -hmm. my actually my mother and my grandmother are really amazing singers. Yeah, like they could have definitely been very, you know, uh, they could have been, you know, famous singers. Mm -hmm. I mean, just beautiful voices. So I, I know that it's in my genes, um, but and I do sing. I sing the mantra all the time. There's been so many times where I've come on here and that's all I do is I'll just, I don't care who's watching me. I'll just start Good. mantra and I'll just sing. I mean, every video on here that I have, I'm singing mantra the whole time. Good. Yeah. Good. I just want people to feel the energy of it, you know? Mm-hmm. So, mm -hmm. but, yeah, I get some people on here that... Yeah, I, you know, I got this little beer gut going on here. We call it what you want, uh, gluten gut or whatever you want to call it. I got that going on. I, you know, I could care less. doesn't matter. Yeah. As long as you feel healthy, that's all that matters. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to show you my symbols. I bought this little, um, check out my Organite mm -hmm. pyramid. Awesome. Okay. Beautiful. Oh. Yeah, yeah. It's like purple. 
That's beautiful. People probably don't even know what organite is. Oh, I do. I know you do. Mm-hmm. So I actually have some organite with made with Siesta Key 99% quartz crystal sand. Do you know how to make organite? Oh, I wish. Someday I will. Yeah, I don't think it's very hard. I don't think it's mm. that hard to do. You need some kind of polymer and probably some copper, some kind of metal um, that's that's conducive for you know busting clouds or whatever you know you intend for that to do. I just broke this. Oh no! But here's my little organite wand. Ah, uh, well, part of it. <laughs> yeah. Ah, <laughs> uh, it's gorgeous. Well, glue, should I, can I glue it back on? Yeah, I don't see why not. Um, yeah, I can't wait to, tomorrow, um, I'm going to knock it on my computer, which is very, very difficult for me to do. Mm -hmm. Very difficult for me to do. And I'm just going to sit in meditation all day long and um, play the symbols, which it really sucks. Bear Bear is terrified of my tuning fork. I have a tuning fork. He just runs for the hills as soon as he hears it. And the cymbals, oh, he just runs away. I think it's uh -huh. so loud in his ear. I mm -hmm. think that's why. I think it's just like, because, you know, they hear so much better than we do. Mm -hmm. But um, maybe that's a good thing. Maybe that's, maybe so he won't distract me and he'll go away. Maybe. Because <laughs> <laughs> when, I, when I work on somebody, let me tell you, he is all up in the biz. I mean, he's like not happy that I'm touching someone or I'm working mm -hmm. with someone. It's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so I've got plans uh, for later on today. Well, it's like almost four o'clock here, we but should, um, we should do a Skype. I mean, you should do a meditation. I think that would be really awesome. I'm I'm in. Yeah. Count me in. Yeah, we'll do a Skype one. But I I do what I call a, a walk of gratitude, and I'm going to incorporate something a little bit different tomorrow. And for your listeners and followers, this is what I say on my walk of gratitude. Dear Creator, Source, Universe, Spirit Guides, Guardian Angels, friends and family on both sides of the veil, galactic neighbors and friends, higher self, and Mother Earth. I'm sorry if I don't say this as often as I should. Please forgive me. Thank you for your unconditional love, safety, support, protection, and abundance in everything that's good in life, as I promise to listen with open eyes, ears, mind, and heart. I ask that you help me turn on all the codons in my DNA, as well as activate all past, current, and future strands of DNA so I can heal myself and others and humanity's best interests. I also ask that you send this white light to cover not only the past, future, but, the, but as well as the current timeline that we're in to heal all timelines instantaneously at once. And more than anything, I love you all so very much. So the thing that I changed about that was to send the white light to heal all timelines, past, current, and future. I'm getting a really uh, loud ringing in my ear. Right uh, after you said that, like, really loud ringing in my ear. Just now, that was really weird. That's awesome. Yeah. Yay. Yeah. That means that um, that really connected with me. Thank you. Yeah. Wow. Very cool. That was it's crazy. very, very powerful. Uh, and you can find what I say on N5D, just uh, type in Walk of Gratitude and Greg, G-R-E-G-G, -G, in the search box and you'll find it there. And feel free to change it. You know, what I say, Creator, Source, Universe, Spirit Guides, Guardian Angels, that's my posse. You know, if you believe in Jesus, throw them in there for your posse. If you want to use God instead of Creator, Source, do that. Change it to whatever you want to change it to. Make it yours. Own it. Yeah. Just do it. And maybe visualize, you know, towards the end when you said that, you know, you're you um, have this white light, you know, mm -hmm. affect the past, the future, and the present. Yes. Um, maybe you could visualize planet Earth, you know, and visualize this, just this white light of love just, you know, going all over Earth. Well, that's what I actually do after the love, uh, after, after I do the walk of gratitude on the beach. When I'm walking back, I do what I call a love bubble meditation. And I ask my posse, creator, source, universe, spirit, guides, guardian, angels, right down the line, mm -hmm. to join me to magnify their loving, healing energy from their heart center mm -hmm. and spread it out as far as they can throughout the planet, galaxy, universe, multiverse, and omniverse. Mm -hmm. So we're just flooding the planet. And I've got millions of people that are people helping me on the other side of the veil. People don't realize 
realize how powerful that is. That is mm -hmm. powerful, very powerful, especially when we join together. I mean, when we join together, we can cure things in the body if, if we sure. are really chanting and really seeing that person pure and healthy. I mean, I've seen sure. Greg Braddon. Did you see that that video of, of um, it was a hospital setting a woman's laying on a bed. And this is another country, of course, because we don't heal people in America. <laughs> so right. There's, a, there's, there's, two, there's two TV screens and one of them showing this, uh, this tumor inside of this woman's you know, uh, reproductive area. And then there's another one and it's showing this fucking tumor inside of this woman shrinking as these doctors, shamans, whatever you want to call them are around her and they're chanting, they're chanting, chanting, chanting. And you see this tumor disappear. Now, you want to be a skeptic and believe, oh, there's, oh, what, there's something that's, you know, some, fine, that's, that's the life you're going to live. But I have been shown magical things, so I know that that's a very, very real thing. Mm -hmm. you know, how amazing. It, people, it's just, it's so ingrained in us that we're not these magnificent beings because we're not taught it lifetime after lifetime after lifetime. So it, it's, it's, it's about pulling these people out from under that crap that we've been shoved into. You know what I mean? You have to believe that you are that God or goddess. We all are. And that's the hardest thing for us to own is that, Tasha, you're a goddess. Greg, I'm a god. We have to own that and believe that we can do anything. And we hold ourselves back thinking, oh, I can't do that. That's not me. That's just fantasy. No, it's not. It's real. Once you can figure out how to turn on all these codons in your DNA, you can do anything. You can teleport. You can manifest out of thin air. There's a reason why 44 of our 64 codons are turned off right now. And I, want to be, I want to be that first person to figure out how to turn them on. And the first thing I'm going to do is lay my hands down on Mother Earth and heal the air, water, and food supplies. And the next thing I'm going to do is hook my higher self up with every other higher self on the planet and give them that, those abilities as well, as long as they use them in humanity's best interests. You know, and, and to give you the scientific um, talk about that, what he's talking about is when you learn anatomy and physiology and kinesiology, guess what? They're teaching you that 98% of your DNA is junk. That's literally the term they use. Junk. Bullshit. 98% of your DNA is junk. It's it's not junk. It's, it's, mm -mm. Quantum. it's quantum and they don't understand it. Well, they do understand it. They just yeah. don't have to understand it. But there's much more to the body and to who you are than you can mm -hmm. ever imagine. We are magical, magical, multidimensional beings. And when you know that, not on a belief, not on a, not, not based off of a belief or, oh, that sounds good, but you know that because you've had experiences with it and you've been shown it. It's the most beautiful thing in the world. And, and you Own it. Own it. Me towards anybody ever again. There would mm -hmm. never be hate towards anybody because when you're hating somebody, you're hating yourself. Mm -hmm. Simply. And that's going to become even more dramatic, I think, for people. The more that they are hating, the more that they're resisting their natural innate self because your innate self is not, um, it's not evil. You know what I mean? It's, it's of love. It's pure, divine source I love. Think people are going to, um, they're going to struggle even more. You know the ones that have a lot of hate in their, their, mm -hmm. their hearts. I'm gonna close the. Um, it's getting cold. Okay. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us too. Um, you know, this is just a metaphysical conversation that we're having, and you know, if you want to learn a little bit more about me, you can visit me on n5d.com. Feel free to friend me on Facebook. Um, but I totally dig, this is the kind of conversation I love having 24 seven. When, you know, when I wake up in the morning, I want to talk about, Hey, what was your dreams about? You know, what, what spaceship were you on today? Or try to figure out the metaphors and how that ties into what's going on now and in the future. That's the kind of stuff I dig. Yeah, me too. I'm not focusing on, um, you know, this reality mm -hmm. <laughs> so much, mm -hmm. you know, more so about our, our, uh, deep, essence of who we are and mm -hmm. the things that seem to be hidden from the conscious. Yes. You know? Yep. I, I, I do, I, you know, I do like, I, you know, I took the course, you know, and mm -hmm. surprisingly, it's very difficult to find people that are willing to even 
do a session for, for free, let alone charge them, you know, money for it. Um, I guess I'm just in the wrong city. You know what I mean? I really think I am just in the wrong city. Yeah, yeah. Very dense energy there, my friend. I know. Mm hmm I know. I won't be here for much longer. Not yeah. Yeah. Where I live, it's one of the 22 cities of light. If you do the numerology of Sarasota and break down every letter into a numerical value, for example, A is 1, B is 2, C is 3, mm -hmm. Sarasota works out to be 11. Hmm. I'm sorry, Florida works out to be 11. Sarasota works out to be 22. And mm. want to guess what siesta key is? 33. 33. Yeah. That's hilarious because that's my numbers mm -hmm. they've always been my numbers I've, mm -hmm. I've always seen that's my repeat repeating numbers all that my mm -hmm. whole life you know and my life path number just happens to be three of course which is funny. of course yeah yeah um uh, mm -hmm. so yeah I think that um we've been on here for a good half hour and a half mm, wow so hopefully <laughs> yeah you see how fast it can go, right? Yeah, yeah. This could have easily been a four-hour chat. <laughs> Listen, like, remind, remind me of YouTube viewers to come to you now if they want to guess. Oh, yeah, definitely. I don't, I don't know how to do that, though. So, well, Just go to In5D or go, go to YouTube and type in In5D. I am the number five D as in dog. This thing. Whoops. Which way am I going there? There. Yeah. Just okay. type that in and you'll find me there. Uh, or... Friend me on Facebook or follow me on Facebook. I'm, I'm, I have no idea how many friends I have. A shitload. He's got a great site. Yeah. A it's, YouTube, great YouTube uh, library, too, as well. Oh, thank you. Yeah. yeah. Done a lot of interviews on, on YouTube. Interviewed a lot of really cool names in this field. So if you're into this field, check it out. You'll dig it. Yeah. Thanks so, for having me join you, too. Thank this you. This has been a blast. Yeah, it has. Yeah. We're going to have to be, we're gonna be doing it a lot, I hope. Okay. I'm in. Yeah, I'm in. Definitely. Count me in. Interviewed a lot of really cool names in this field. So if you're into this. Whoops. Hey. Oh. I think. What's going on? Oh. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what I did. I, I think I. Should I, I, I'm still the new to uh, the, the, what is it? You now newbie. So. Yeah, I, I, I kind of am too. I mean, I haven't really messed a lot around a whole lot. With uh huh. Um, like I said, it, it's a great platform for people that. I just, I have to get connected with the people that are, um, into this stuff, you know, mm -hmm. I know they're there, um, because a few of them have connected with me, but you know, I just got to get on during the day. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll go as deep as you want to go. Yeah. yeah. How far down the rabbit hole do you want to go? As yeah. far as you can go. Yeah, baby. Yes. You, you got it. The day when most of those people are awake, I think, you know? Yes. Yeah. All yeah. right, you guys. Well, thank you for hanging out with us and. Mm -hmm. I hope that we planted some beautiful seeds within you. Definitely. Exploring who you truly are and much love to all of you. How far down the rep? Whoops, what am I doing here? Okay. Peace out. Bye.